afternoon, evening, I guess. I have uh, literally zero planning for this video, but some people are asking questions about boost control, and so I figured that I would uh, do a quick discussion on it. And like I said, no planning, so forgive me if I um, say some weird stuff. So I'm going to use my board, because I always use my board. <clears throat> so we're talking about boost control and uh, uh, fluctuations, wastegate fluctuations uh, on the forum. So first, I think to understand all of that, we need to discuss first, you know, what exactly um, is boost control and how it's worked. So we're going to start with how it pertains to external wastegates. And then I'll do some internal as well. I know that seems backwards because look, you'll have internal and they move to external, but the discussion was about external, so I'm going to start there first. Anyways, external wastegates. Um, well, how does boost control work? Well, you have your turbocharger, so I'm going to draw your turbocharger here, your turbocharger. Whee! And the turbocharger has a hot side and a cold side, as we'll know, a compressor and a turbine side. Uh, the turbine side is what controls uh, the turbo speed, essentially. So how does a, a turbo work? A turbo works with um, energy in the exhaust, usually in the form of uh, um, exhaust gas velocity. Um, a smidge of heat, like people think that like it takes heat out of the exhaust, it really doesn't do much of that. Um, it does have some heat transfer that occurs because there is a different pressure across the turbine blades and uh, the gas on one side of the turbine is uh, high pressure um, relative to the other side which is low pressure and with almost anything when it goes from high pressure to low pressure it expands and therefore it loses heat. Um, so it isn't so much that the turbo is absorbing heat as that the gas is expanding as the heat drops. Um, <clears throat> but what you do have is the different pressure across the turbine that drives the turbocharger. Okay, so here's here is uh, I did that wrong. Here's a piston. Here's my piston. Alrighty, in my engine, in my cylinder, and I have to have my exhaust valve. Exhaust port. Okay, so here's my exhaust valve and my exhaust port. Uh, hot exhaust gas leaves the engine through the exhaust valve and goes into the turbocharger. So I'm going to draw the, a pipe here, we'll say. Here's our flange and here's our snail, right? And here's the exhaust side of it. And then this goes out the pipe. How's that work? That's okay. Yes, okay. So if we just coupled the two together, we would have every bit of exhaust gas that leaves the engine go through the uh, turbine, and eventually the boost would avalanche and turbine speed would go up exceptionally high, and that would uh, provide us with no control. Um, the only way we have to control it of any means at all would be to alter the size of this turbine housing, the volume of it, in hopes that uh, we can make it large enough that it bypass enough gas or not have enough diff different pressure across the turbine to prevent it from getting really high boost levels. But that's obviously less than ideal, so we need a method of controlling it. Plus, we want to have a small enough turbine that we have good differential pressure across the turbine early enough uh, in the RPM band that we're able to get small, right? Less lag. So we need a method to control that, so we have to relieve this pressure somehow. So we have to add in a wastegate, all right? Boom. So here's our wastegate. Now, how does a wastegate work? Like this, I'm going to draw it, which you guys are used to seeing. <laughs> All right, wastegate. That works. All right, wastegate's got a valve seat. Got a valve seat, right? It seals the gate off and closes everything. All right, there we go. Valve seat, perfect. And inside here we have a spring. And that's not done right because there's actually a diaphragm in there. So a diaphragm, spring above it, gate attached, have a lower port and an upper port. Okay, so when you need to slow the turbocharger down or maybe stop it at the RPM that it's going, presently you need to open this gate a certain amount, a little bit or a lot, depends on how much pressure you got to bleed off. Um, so what determines when this lifting point is, we'll say that uh, there's no boost control so long. All you have is this guy right here. Right, this is your sensing line. This goes to the bottom port of the external wastegate. 
and it provides uh, pressurization of this lower chamber, which lifts it against the spring pressure. But that's not the only force acting on it. The exhaust gas pressure here um, is going to also want to push its way out because this is a low pressure here, very low, and this is a high pressure, right? So it wants to go from high pressure to low pressure, it wants to push against this gate. So when you buy a 10 PSI spring, right, they say 10 pound spring, they tell you it's, I don't know, plain color or whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> it's not necessarily 10 pounds. What that is, is it's, they even said on the bottom of the sheet that the assumption is made a little asterisk that the boost pressure is equal to the exhaust gas back pressure. So what they're saying is, the spring pressure is 10 pounds if this is 10 pounds and this is 10 pounds. Okay, that's what they're, that's what they're telling you. Um, if this, for example, was say 16 pounds and this was 10 pounds, then the spring um, would have opened a long time ago. Actually, it would have opened when this was probably like eight pounds or something. The way to figure that out is um, with a little math. If you find out the kind of surface area of this disc, how much of that, how big is that disc, how, much, how many square centimeters or inches are in that, and the surface area of the diaphragm here, how many square inches or centimeters are of that, then you get a total surface area, and you can use that number. Um, we'll just make up a number, so this is about an inch. We'll say, we'll say it's one inch, one inch square. All right, it's 38 millimeters around, um, but if it's a square, it'd be around an inch square, and then the diaphragm is about twice that big, so it's uh, about two inches. So we'll have, we'll say a total of three square inches, no square, three square inches, okay? So what does that mean? Well, if we have 10 PSI here and 10 PSI here times three square inches, then we have 30 pounds of force pushing up on this here. So the spring, therefore, in its normal relaxed compressed valve closed state would have to have around 30 pounds of force for it uh, to hold it shut against that. So in actuality, what they're really going to be, it's probably you know, like 28 pounds of force in the spring so that the gate starts to open some and uh, and, and you get some um, uh, ability for it to control boost, you know, some flow. Otherwise, for it to be full open, this pressure would have to be larger because the springs obviously create more pressure as you compress them. So anyways, that's basically how they work. Um, <clears throat> you can use a solenoid, for example, this is attached to the intake manifold, I should have said that, sorry, intake manifold. Okay, that's your boost reference, basically. Now you can choose to use a solenoid, be a two or a three port solenoid, to vent the gases off of this lower chamber, or also you could use a three port to pressurize the top half of this chamber here to negate any pressure here. And therefore, you have a net zero across this diaphragm, and then you only have the exhaust pressure pushing up, and you have the spring pressure pushing down. Or you can use a four port in which you remove the pressure from here completely and only put the boost pressure here, which will put this at atmosphere, and this at 10 pounds, and this 10 pounds. So then you would have even more pushing down on it and holding it shut. That require a four port there because you need to be able to have one side vented at all times, otherwise you won't get any movement, you'll just trap a volume of air in there and it won't work or anything like that. So the solenoid, again, is used to control the airflow to here. Well, uh, how, how does it do that? Well, there's a signal that it's fed, and I don't know if it's a square wave, but I would assume it's probably a square wave because most solenoids are driven by a square wave. And so it gets uh, no voltage, a voltage, no voltage, a voltage, right, like this. Now, that's when you want it to open, and then a duty cycle of a valve would mean that it's either open longer, they could do it that way, or that they open it more frequently, closer together in the ways, depends on the programming and, and how it's done, if it's just held open longer or if it's cycled more in a period of time. I don't know what the Subaru strategy is, but I do know it's, I believe, uh, 12 hertz, I think it's 12 hertz, I'll have to double check, it might be 18 hertz, it's something like that. So it's not very many cycles per second, as you would say, because that's what hurts me, cycle per second. So it wouldn't send a signal to the valve very frequently. And this is the root of the flutter that a lot of guys talk about. They hear the wastegate flutter, and that's what this is really boiling down to. So if I port the, the gases away from this valve 12 times a second, 
the valve will literally pulse 12 times a second and go right now it might you might not hear that um, if the boost pressure is low enough that you don't need to force the gate shut um, for a longer period of time or very much to achieve your target boost then the valve will likely pop open and kind of float in here and you'll get just like a rah, rah, almost a constant roar maybe a little bit of oscillation you might hear it. but then as you increase the boost pressure or increase the requested boost and how long you vent the pressure off of here then you will hear more chatter pop 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 um, which is what a lot of cars here so that's one of the main sources of it it doesn't matter if you had a two port uh, a three port or anything like that um, it, or how you're venting it off. The problem is the factory SU is running at 12 hertz and that gives you that fluctuation. If you're running at a higher frequency, a lot of aftermarket valves are actually designed to be 28 to 30 something hertz based on what valve it is. Um, if you adjusted it to operate at the higher frequency, the chatter would become such a high frequency um, that it would, uh, you might not hear, it. or the air bleeding off of this would be uh, more times per second than the valve was actually capable of opening and shutting and responding to it due to its mass, its inertia, and the venting time of it, that it would completely eliminate any um, chatter anyways. So that's another aspect of it. And the last thing is uh, sometimes, on especially on internal wastegate setups, the chatter is caused by this pressure exceeding the spring pressure. So what that means is the pressure in this manifold is, is going up and exceeds the spring pressure um, well past its ability to vent the signal off and it blows it open anyways. And so what happens is the pressure goes up and it, poof, it pops the valve open, the exhaust escapes, the pressure drops down, the valve shuts, and the pressure builds up again. You get this oscillation inside the pipe here, chunk, 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 as the valve is opening and shutting um, as the pressure rises and drops and rises and drops. Um, that's also a very common, uh, especially on internals because they just have a little eight pound spring in the actuator and the boost control system on internal is slightly different than the wastegate internal. It has one diaphragm, uh, well, it has a diaphragm, but it has one port. The other port is in the atmosphere, so you can't adjust um, where you're putting air on them. Um, and of course, like I said, they also have lower spring pressure. And they have a tiny little, little uh, wastegate arm on, or I'm sorry, uh, wastegate door uh, that doesn't flow a lot of uh, air, thus the reason for the external wastegate. And so that little door has to hold back a lot of pressure. Um, and try and also that's a lot of flow at the same time. So it's uh, it's it's a big reason why you have boost creep and why you need external waste gate. Um, I think I covered everything. If not, feel free to ask some questions and I can do a follow-up on this. Thank you.